Oh. Hey, what is up, Aquamigos? Welcome to another Fish Friday, and thank you guys so much for joining me today. I am your host, Tobias, and welcome to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to propagate Anubias. I have some Anubias back here in my guppy tank, AKA my algae tank. I know the glare this time of the day, it makes it impossible to see, but that's it right there. I previously made a video on how to propagate Java Fern, and in that video, I kind of mentioned that propagating Anubius was pretty much the same process, but I didn't actually show myself doing it, so I actually want to show myself doing it this time. And if you look down here, this Java Fern plant coming up right there, that's one of the Java Ferns that we propagated in that video. And this is a little off topic, but check out this, uh, my guppy bin over here. I just spotted a couple fry over there. I haven't shown them on video yet. Oh, there's one right there. So the thing about Anubius is that it's just like Java Fern in the sense that it grows from a rhizome. Pretty much a rhizome is a continuously growing horizontal underground stem which puts out lateral shoots and adventitious roots at intervals. Adventitious just means at random. So then the way you want to go about propagating an Anubius plant is by cutting that rhizome and everywhere where you cut that rhizome that will become its own plant. Now the thing about Anubius is that in the places where where you cut it, you want to kind of leave like maybe three stems coming off it with leaves. Like I think three is a pretty good number. And the reason is, is because Anubius is like a very slow growing plant and it's going to take a while for it to grow like new stems with leaves. So you want to make sure that it's able to like photosynthesize, you know, take in the sun so that it can metabolize the nutrients and the water to grow more. So I would say try to leave like at least three leaves on each new plant that you separate off and just try to make the cut as clean as you can. And then once you cut those pieces off and you're separating out your different plants, you want to attach them to something because you cannot bury the rhizome or the roots in the substrate of your tank. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie them to lava rocks using thread. You could also use fishing line if you don't have thread or you can use super glue just make sure that it's like an aquarium safe super glue and you don't have to attach it to rocks you could attach it to other aquarium decorations or driftwood just as long as you're not putting the rhizome and the roots in the substrate you're good. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is actually what I ended up with and this is actually not the ideal situation. As you can see, I got part of the rhizome that doesn't have any roots coming out of it. And in the process, because I was pretty much cutting away blindly, somehow I cut these two leaves off. I'm not even sure where they came off of because it doesn't look like they came from this piece. So unfortunately, I'm just going to have to throw these two leaves away. Those are two big, nice leaves too. But on this piece, we did get a good four solid leaves and stems. And the most important part is still intact, which is the rhizome that they're all connected to. So I mean, as long as the rhizome is still good, this can still grow into a full plant. So hopefully this piece will go ahead and grow some more roots out and it'll be okay. So let's go ahead and attach this to a lava rock. All right guys, so there we go. I'm gonna try to get it to sit just like that. I know it's kind of weird, the rock's kind of tied to the back of it, but it'll be enough to weigh it down. And yeah, let's go ahead and put it in. And since I'm actually kind of running out of space at the bottom of this tank, let's go ahead and put it in my other tank, my newly aquascaped tank. Let's put it down here. So I'm not gonna leave that Anubius plant in there permanently. I'm just kind of putting it in there because I don't have room for it in my other tank. And the reason I don't wanna leave it in here is because it kind of messes with the scale of the scape. Like you can't have giant leaves next to a rock that's supposed to be like a mountain you know what I mean so I kind of did a bad example in this video like I really should have gotten roots in my clipping but from what I understand and from what I've read online that like people say about Anubius Anubius mostly uses its roots for anchoring not so much for absorbing nutrients so I think it'll be okay and I have heard other people say online that they have propagated Anubius without roots and it grew fine but I just want to make it clear that like I wouldn't actually recommend doing it the way I did I would definitely try to get roots in there. So I'm just going to interject for a quick moment here because yesterday on Instagram I asked you guys to ask me any questions you want that you want me to answer in this video. So I'm just going to go through those questions real quick and answer them. And they didn't have to be about fish, they could be about anything. So my first question is from my friend Corey. Corey says, when are we getting married? 
<laughs> so Corey's my friend in real life. We've known each other for a really long time. And you know, she's just messing around. You know, she's she likes to play around like that. But uh, Corey, you have a boyfriend now. You can't be can't be saying that. Next we got Finley Fletcher 2018. What is the next step in your career? And that's a that's a very good question. So aside from making YouTube my full-time career, there are other things that I would also like to do. I really want to continue pursuing my music career. I do have a solo music project that I've been working on for a couple years now, and I think I want to reveal that to my YouTube audience in the near future. Podcasting is also something that I've kind of been thinking about getting into, and ultimately I would love to put out like a new piece of content every day. I would maybe need help to do that because even doing these three times a week uploads, it's extremely hard. Like it's a lot of work, but those are kind of like the next steps in my career that I could see in like the near future. Tia, 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 Tia. That's my sister. My sister asked me a question. She said, how many fish do you have? Estimate how many types, how many fish I have, like individual little fish, including the guppies. I don't know, maybe like a hundred. Oh no, man. Cause I have all those baby goldfish now too. And a ton of baby rosy red minnows. So I don't know, like maybe 200. I don't know. There's a lot. As for how many types, fancy guppies, I'm counting them as one type. Goldfish, I have four types. Butterfly koi, dojo loach. So that's like seven types of fish. Next we have Gustavus. Who is your favorite Swede? Gustavus, you know the answer to this, man. My favorite Swede is Gustavus. He's probably also the only Swede I know. <laughs> what is the biggest tank you own? The biggest tank I own is my uh, 20 gallon tank. I only really have two tanks. I have my 15 gallon and my 20 gallon. And then I have that guppy bin, which is like 17 gallons. So yeah, my biggest one is my 20 gallon. I like these questions, guys. You guys really did a good job here. Charlotte asked me, what's your favorite genre of music? Ooh, that's a tough one. So my favorite band ever is a band called Igloo and Hartley. They're from California. And so I guess that would be my favorite genre. I don't know what you would even call them. They're kind of like, they're a new band, but their style of sound is kind of like 80s hip hop, but modern day indie. I really don't know what their genre would be. Kind of like party music, I guess. And aside from that, I guess my second favorite band would be Taking Back Sunday. And they're like, alternative rock emo so i guess those would be like my favorite genres next we have raul he says favorite fish and why so i think my favorite fish is probably a butterfly koi i really love koi fish and butterfly koi i love their like long fins so i would say those are probably my favorite fish next chair layer Ch chalier is that how you're saying that but charlie um, what is your favorite fish that you've owned? Probably my butterfly koi. I really like that fish. Like seeing the growth of a fish, like such a dramatic growth of a fish is really fun in my opinion. And then my friend Tommy Trena, who I also know in real life, he asked me if you had unlimited money, how many fish would you own? And how many fish is too many fish? Ooh, that's actually a really good question. So honestly, guys, regardless of like how much it would cost or anything, I wouldn't actually go too crazy with fish if I had like unlimited funds. I guess my thing would be is if I had like my own house and I had like a decent area of land where I could build a pretty large pond. What I would really, really like to do is build a huge pond big enough to keep a sturgeon in. I would love to have a Siberian sturgeon as well as like some, you know, large koi. So like whatever size pond I would need for one of those because I know they need like enormous ponds. I would really like to do that. And then as for like fish tanks, again, if I had like unlimited money, I think what I would really like to do is do like a somewhat large reef tank. And then what I would do is I would hire one of those services that would come and maintain it just because like I know nothing about reef tanks, but like I've always loved saltwater tanks. Like they're so cool, the types of fish you can get and stuff like that. You know, maybe just keep like a nicely aquascaped freshwater tank as well. So I would probably just have like those two tanks and an enormous pond and that's probably about it just have everything like really nice really high quality and that's it really and how many fish is too many fish I would say to the point where the maintenance is taking up a lot of my time like I would ideally like to keep things relatively low maintenance two to three hours of maintenance a week would be okay anything more than that in my opinion I think it would be too much also I asked you guys to send me pictures of your fish tanks or ponds or whatever I got a couple people uh, Gustavus actually messaged me with a picture of his brand new black ghost knife fish that is one of the coolest fish like oh those fish are so cool i originally saw one in a serpa design video and after i saw that video i was like 
Whoa, that is like one of the coolest fish I've ever seen. Congrats on that fish, man. I heard they're hard to keep. And then I also got some pictures from my buddy Matt who lives up in Washington state and he has some really nice scenery around where he lives, like including like some natural ponds on the property where he lives. And he lives like right on a lake, which is like super cool. It's so nice. I visited Washington once, like, I don't know, like seven years ago. And it was, it was a really nice place. Washington's a very nice state to visit. So anyways, guys, thank you to everybody who asked me a question in this video. And also thank you to you guys who sent me pictures that I added in this video. That was super fun to do. And if you're not following me on Instagram yet, I'll I'll put my handle right here. It's at YT underscore Tobias because I would like to do more things in the future where I include you guys in my videos. I think it's like so fun to do. And remember guys, if you guys did like this video, make sure to go down there and give this video a like. That would help me out so much. And if you would like to see more videos by me in the future, I'm uploading new fish videos every Friday. I'm calling it Fish Fridays. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell notifications button. And I will talk to you guys in my next video. Peace.